So welcome to our next class in drafting. We're going to get a little advanced tonight to give you guys a little more of a fun project. So from this old book, uh, we're looking at what we call an isometric drawing right now. And uh, an iso drawing is a great way to uh, illustrate what you're trying to accomplish as a designer. Now, I know um, there are folks out there that would say, as a purist, I don't need no isometric drawing. I know what I, how to read prints. And I get that. But there isn't a tool maker or a machinist or an estimator. Anybody who has a deal with blueprints for, uh, in their, for a living that doesn't appreciate an isometric drawing. So basically, it's a 3D drawing, right? And an isometric drawing is drawn on a 30 degree angle. In this particular drawing, and this is an example, this is a, uh, an assembly and a dimensioned assembly. Sometimes assemblies just show lines and show how everything's going to go together, which is extremely helpful. In this case, they've spent a lot of time to dimension it too. So an isometric drawing is basically a drawing that's been set on 30 degrees. And what I do is, uh, if I take my 30 degree triangle and kind of square it up with the edge of my paper, you can see this drawing is set exactly at 30 degrees. So the trick with isometric drawings is how to draw your circles because your circles and diameters are offset into ellipses, all right? So the question becomes how to draw a circle at 30 degrees. So that's what we're gonna learn a little bit about tonight. A few things you'll need for this lesson. Uh, I guess I should say, for smaller circles, you can buy these templates. These are ellipse templates, okay? And uh, they come in, uh, this has got four different angles, 50, 40, 30, and 20, depending on what projection you're doing. But for the most part, you're always gonna do uh, 30 degrees. Now, and you just line these up, they work great, but the issue is they only go up to about an inch and a quarter diameter. What if you have to do a big uh, shaft or a big uh, isometric circle? Well, that becomes a different issue. So that's what I'm gonna teach you tonight. A few things you'll need for this tonight is uh, your compass for the first time. You'll need your compass, a scale, or your drafting machine with a scale on it. And you'll need, um, of course, your pencils. And tonight your pencil needs to be very sharp because your layout lines matter a lot in this exercise. And finally, finally, uh, you'll need your 30 degree uh, triangle. So what we're gonna do right now is, uh, first of all, take a break and switch to another camera and I'm going to show you how I sharpened my compass point. That's very important. Nice sharp point on your compass. So let's take a look at that first. So now we need to sharpen our compass point and you can see uh, this is the fixed end. It's got the metal tip in it with a needle point. And we've got this blunt piece of graphite in there. Now the question would be is why don't I just take this out put it in my lead holder and sharpen it in my pencil sharpener. That's just time consuming. I'm going to have to take it out, put it in the pencil, sharpen the pencil, put it, take it back out, put it back in here. So the way we do it, or used to do it, I guess, is you need a file. In this particular case today, I'm just going to use a nail file. Now, uh, for the sake of uh, filming, usually you would do this over a trash can, all right? because you're gonna make, you can see some mess here, some, some graphite is going to, uh, going to fall down and you don't want that to hit your drawing. I've made that very clear, okay? But basically, to take a, a, fi uh, a compass, you've got this blunt point here. First thing you're gonna do is the side that faces the opposite side, the inside face. You're going to sharpen that at an angle. As you can see, I'm putting an angle on it. Let's see if I can get that. Okay, a little more. This loads up pretty quick. It's pretty fine. And then we're just going to tip it back on its side and chisel the point. the other side make it a little more 
it's even. And that should work. You've got a nice sharp point there, a chisel point with a flat on the side that faces the um, inside of the compass. So that's basically it. Now, usually I would have that go a little further down. And let me just do that off camera quickly. Meanwhile, I just dumped graphite all over my drawing, which is what I did not want to do. There we go. Can you, I hope you can see that. So again, it's flat. It's flat facing the other side. You can look at the graphite on my fingers already. I'll have to wash my hands, but there you go. Nice, sharp compass point. That's what you're going to need for this exercise. Well, um, I already recorded this lesson once tonight, and I was so careful with my light layout lines with my sharp pencil lead holder that uh, you can't see it on the video, and I don't want this to be a magic act. So tonight, again, I'm going to re-record re this with darker lines. I normally would not use a drawing pencil, a sketching pencil, but... In order for you guys to see what I'm talking about, uh, we're going to do this with a darker pencil. Now, what you need, of course, is your 30 degree triangle or a drafting machine that you can set at 30 degrees, your compass, and your scale. All right, so let's start off with uh, just drawing a 30 degree angle with your triangle. And I'm going to draw kind of in the middle of the page here. Again, I would normally not do this so dark. Then I'm going to draw a vertical line. Our object here tonight is a 4 inch diameter circle set at 30 degrees. Now, the trick with this is you have to set your 2 inch radius for a 4 inch diameter circle along the 30 degree angle. So, using your scale or the drafting machine, I'm going to put a dot here at 2 inches and a dot here at 2 inches. I'm going to put vertical lines on those points. Then, for the vertical uh, alignment, we're going to go straight up and down, not along the 30 degree axis. Again, two inches, two inches. Then draw those lines at 30 degrees. Now, we're going to form a magic square. We are going to run from the center line of the plane to this corner. And it's already a little off because of the way I'm doing this tonight. So this should be interesting. And then we're going to run another one from this corner to the center line. That's your magic box. So now we get our compass out. And we're going to set our first radius from this corner to this corner. And that would be in the formula R1, radius 1. come down and set my compass here. So I like the way that looks and should swing right to that center line. Same thing from this corner to the opposite corner. Well, it's a little off. I'm not surprised. Just a little bit. I'm going to fudge this a little bit by adjusting my compass. Because again, normally what I would do is draw this with very light lines and really be careful about my compass points. So those are your first two radius. Diagonal to he here. Diagonal here to here. Alright. Next radius is the intersection. 
I forgot to draw two lines. I'm going to come from the center here, up, and the center or the corner here, up. Then we're going to swing a radius by adjusting our compass. Slowly. I'm drawing this one light. See, see how it lines up. So I'm going to fudge my compass by moving it over a little bit. It's okay. Nobody's going to put this through QC. Still needs to move over a little bit. And that's because of the thick lines I use for my layout. Should be very close on this one, but I'll give myself room to move, which I have to. And again, a lot of this is due to the thick layout lines. So I'm just basically moving my compass point around until I get it. It's usually less than a sixteenth of an inch. And again, nobody's going to notice that you had to move your compass point a little bit. So that's it. Radius 1 is here to here and here. Radius 1 is also from here to here to here. And then these intersections in this magic box. So again, uh, this is your magic box right here. Okay. And the first drawing I did, which is much lighter, and I spent much more time with, I didn't have to move my compass so much. Because I'm using an architectural pencil with dark lines so you can see it, I had to fudge where I moved the compass a little bit to get these to work. But again, nobody's going to notice that you had to move your compass. The, uh, the, the trick here is to practice with this, and again, use light lines for your layout. Um, but that is a nice looking 30 degree forged diameter circle. The trick again was to draw that magic box and to lay out your um, radius along the 30 degree angle this way and then straight up and down this way. And that's how you get the ellipse with the compass. So I hope that is informative. It's a fun exercise. You'll enjoy it. Um, you might want to do yours light first, like I did originally, to give yourself room, because again, as I have explained, these are not drafting pencils. These are artist sketching pencils, but at least you can see what I did there. 30 degree forged diameter circle, uh, an isometric view.